Welcome to part two of our floating ash bed project. In part one, which I'll link to below, we built the headboard. That can be a standalone project if you already have a steel bed frame, but today we'll build the rest of the bed. I think you'll find this two video series full of good ideas that you can apply to a wide range of woodworking projects, including beds. We already joined boards with dovetail ties and we template routed the legs. Now we'll create knockdown joinery for easy disassembly, including with lockdown rabbits and homemade brackets, and with simple dovetails, which are made easy to cut with a little handsaw jig. We'll create a springy platform for extra comfort without a traditional box spring, and the bed itself will appear to float above the floor with no visible legs. If you wish to build this bed or one of a similar design, we have a set of very detailed plans, including step-by-step -step instructions, cut lists, drawings, and dozens of photos that you'll find in the plan section of our website at stumpynubs.com or at the link below this video. Or you can just enjoy the videos and pick up some tips along the way that may be applied to other projects. Either way, let's get started. The two corners of the foot of the bed frame will be joined with big dovetails. And since there is only one tail per corner, they're easy enough for just about anyone to cut by hand. A few years ago, I got a magnetic dovetail guide from fellow YouTuber Jonathan Katz Moses. We made a video about it quite a while back. This was Pete's first time using it. It guides your saw at the proper angle via rare earth magnets. I think it works best with a pole saw that can flex a little bit as you move your arm back and forth. One dovetail is cut on each end of each of the frame's side rails. Then they're traced so matching sockets may be cut on each end of the frame's footboard. This little jig may be used for both halves of the joint, and even a power tool guy like Pete, who rarely hand cuts dovetails, found it relatively easy to do the job this way. This jig is not sponsored. Jonathan is just a friend. I'll link to his jig below this video. The other two corners near the head of the bed are less likely to be seen, so I go to the trouble of making fancy dovetail joints when a simple locking rabbit or tongue and dado joint will suffice. The dado half of the joint is created with a router and an edge guide and the tongue is created at the table saw. It doesn't have to be much of a tongue. This joint is for alignment more than anything else. In fact, neither these nor the dovetail joints will be glued together. Nobody wants a giant bed frame that can't be disassembled. The joints will be secured with homemade brackets instead. These are just six inch pieces of inch and a half angle iron. A drill press is used along with a little bit of oil to bore the screw holes. You could buy brackets if you wanted to. You can even buy fancy knockdown brackets. But these are easy to make, they're cheap, and they're extremely heavy duty, which is important. You don't want flimsy brackets on the corners of a big bed so it racks and breaks when you try to slide it on carpet. These 2x4s serve an important purpose. Actually, they're 2x3s, and they're attached inside the bed frame to support the slats that will be installed later. Screwing them in place looks pretty straightforward, but you better be sure your screws are just the right length because you don't have a lot of room for error when screwing through inch and a half of material and into three quarters of an inch of material. That's not a lesson you wanna learn the hard way, let me tell you. Once all four of these rails are installed, it's time to make some more brackets. These consist of two wood blocks screwed beneath the inner rails to create a notch into which the bed's main support rails can be slipped. This is another part of the knockdown design. Speaking of main support rails, these are what support the legs beneath the bed frame. They're also made from two by fours and the legs are screwed to them. Of course, notches must be cut in the legs first. You don't want the entire weight of the bed and all the people in it only supported by a couple screws. By attaching the legs several inches from the ends of the main support rails, the bed will appear to float. Don't believe me? Well, let's put it together and see. Told you, you can't see the legs from the outside of the bed. It's almost like magic. The headboard now gets connected with screws as the ends of the bed frame rest upon the blocks on the bottom of its legs. Again, the weight is supported by more than just screws alone, so it's chubby proof. Pete's not very chubby, but here he demonstrates how the pine slats that will support the mattress will give under his weight. This creates a spring effect without the need of a box spring beneath the mattress. All of the slats will be secured in place with a screw on each end except for the slat that runs along the head and the one that runs along the foot. These get attached in two places to give some added rigidity against frame racking. Pete couldn't wait for them all to be screwed in place before he tested his reclined remote control skills. This bed frame will receive the same armor seal finish as we did in the headboard video. The whole bed was designed to be relatively easy to assemble and come apart just as easily so it may be moved or stored. It's a queen size, but could easily be made larger or smaller. 
I love the floating design and the dovetail corners at the foot, even if they aren't easy to see under the bedding. I hope you enjoyed the process. Don't forget to check out the project plans and detailed instructions below, and we'll see you next time. MyWoodcutters.com is the sort of small business I like to support. Stefan is a great guy, and he can find you knives and cutters for almost any joiner, planer, shaper, or molding machine. And his are the best prices if you're planning to upgrade to a Helico Carbide Cutter Head. Please use the link below this video to check with him before you buy somewhere else. Some small businesses are just worth supporting. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.